As many of you guys may have heard, a part of the William Hinman emails that are supposed to be released tomorrow, June 13th of 2023, have officially been leaked to public by an unknown source. The craziest part is that this leak revealed something that was unclear, or many XRP investors knew, but there was no facts to prove, that XRP was actually only sued because of the fact that it was competing with the Ethereum Foundation and with Ether, the coin itself. They also specify that Ripple, specifically as a company, got sued because it was a major competitor to Swift. The partial leak revealed two key aspects, and that was that William Hinman was paid to do his speech by the Ethereum Foundation, and that William Hinman and Jake Layton were also paid to do one main thing, and that was sue Ripple, the company, because it was competing with Swift, and make sure XRP was deemed a security because XRP was competing with the Ethereum coin, and not because of the fact that XRP is actually security. In fact, in the leaked information, there's a leaked schedule, which is written in front of you right now, and here is something that is extremely important. On the 14th of June, 2018, in a summit that Ethereum was deemed a cryptocurrency and not a security by William Hinman, Josh Costin, the summit moderator, asks Joe Lubin, which is one of the Ethereum Foundation members that actually had participated in paying William Hinman to do the speech, what do you think is going to happen to Ripple with this new ruling? Joe Lubin does not know how to reply because he answers in a lot of ums. I don't know the answer to that. I wasn't able to read through uh, um, Bill's entire uh, speech. I wasn't here. I don't know if he ref uh, if he spoke about XRP at all. So clearly he knew what he was doing. He didn't want to give an answer. He was put in a corner and he didn't know how to respond because he had paid William Henry to do the speech and he did not want XRP to get any benefit out of doing it. And he already knew that the SC was going to sue XRP because that was part of the agreement between both him, William Hinman, and Jay Clayton is that Ethereum would get this clear clarity that it's a cryptocurrency, XRP would get sued because XRP was a big competitor to Ethereum, and Ripple would get sued because it's a big competitor to Swift. So it was basically a joint attack by the Ethereum Foundation and the Swift team to attack XRP and Ripple so that they can't compete with them anymore. Now, before I move forward, I really want to tell you guys to please hit that subscribe button as we try and hit 20,000 subscribers. And we are doing a juicy 100 XRP giveaway to all of you guys once we do hit that milestone. So make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel with your post notifications on. If you haven't smashed the like button, smash the like button. And of course, comment your thoughts down below. It takes a really long time to give you a very detailed video. It takes a long time to research and do the analysis and do the video in a very straightforward manner. So a simple like, share, and a follow would do me absolutely fantastic. That being said, let's get right back into the video. Now, the whole entire idea that an SC official, William Hinman, took funds and basically provided his own personal interest over his position as he's determined to protect investors and to protect the interest of investors is not a shock because as you guys can see just today, reports have cited that SEC chairman Gary Gensler is doing the exact same thing in present day. Most importantly, he's doing it in literally cryptocurrencies. So news has been reported that the SEC chairman Gary Gensler has been caught and charged with market manipulation of Bitcoin itself, citing that Coinbase has allegedly presented evidence and proof of Gary Gensler placing over $2.5 million in Bitcoin shorts just 48 hours before going ahead and suing Coinbase the actual exchange. He did this because he knowingly know that by going ahead and attacking these exchanges and then deeming a bunch of these 7 or 12 cryptocurrency securities that Bitcoin would go down in value. So what did he do? He shorted Bitcoin, took his profits and was caught doing so. Now, of course, to top it all off, the federal government also caught him doing this. And this is why a U.S. Congress has officially filed a bill to officially fire the SC chairman Gary Gensler from his position just earlier today. But once again, this is not a once in a lifetime situation because clearly the federal government has been exactly extremely mad at Gary Gensler for a while. In fact, just a couple weeks ago, or maybe a month ago now, the SEC chairman Gary Gensler was questioned by the federal government and couldn't answer a single one of his Ethereum or crypto questions. So we're going to go ahead and roll the clip for you guys because this shows you exactly what is going on and proves to us that it's not just us seeing the SEC's falsified, fake numbers where they're getting paid to give out these statements soon whatever companies they feel they want because they're getting paid to do so rather that the federal government is also seeing the conflict of interest and the entire market manipulation that the current sec officials are doing for their own personal gain rather than protecting investors so let's go and roll the clip for you guys 
Most popular are digital assets and powers of Ethereum blockchain. Uh, back in 2018, then SEC Corporation Finance Director Bill Hinman, Hinman uh, stated that he believed Ether was not a security. Uh, last month, CFTC Chair uh, Benham expressed his view that Ether is a commodity. Uh, the State Attorney General of New York asserted in a court filing last month that Ether is a security. Clearly, an asset cannot be both a commodity and a security. Do you agree? Um, I, I, it, actually, all securities are commodity under the Commodity and Exchange Act. It's that we are excluded commodities. But I would agree that a security cannot be also an excluded commodity and an included commodity. I'm sorry, Chair, just to talk about the Commodity Exchange Act more precisely. OK, so do you recognize, uh, how would you categorize Ether then? Look, I think that the general sweep of what Congress did, not just in the 30s, but uh, as amended. I'm asking here, you, sitting in your chair now to make an assessment under the laws as exist, is Ether a commodity or a security? Without speaking to any one. I know you've okay, repeatedly said that you're not going to speak to one, except you've spoken to one, Bitcoin. So I'm asking you to speak to a second one, the lar second largest market cap here. And speaking to the tokens, there's 10 to 12,000. If there's a group of entrepreneurs in I'm the asking middle, about and the one. public is anticipating a profit based on the- I'm asking a specific question, Chair Gensler. I said this in private. This should be no shock to you I'm asking this question. Is, it an eth is Ether a commodity or a security? And again, it depends on the facts and the law, and if there's a group of individuals- I'm asking about the, the facts middle. and the law sitting in your seat and the judgment you are making. And so, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you, you would not want me to prejudge because I'm also- But you have prejudged on this. You've taken, you've taken 50 enforcement actions. We're finding out as we go, as you file suit, as people get Wells notices on what is a security in your view and your agency's view. I'm asking you a very simple question about the second largest digital asset. What is your view? And my view is, is if there's a group of individuals in the middle, middle that the public is anticipating All right, so let me just ask a second question then. Do you think it serves the market for an object to be, to be viewed by the commodities regulator as a commodity and the securities regulator to be viewed as a security? Do you think that provides uh, safety and soundness for, for, for the product? Do you think it provides consumer protection? Do you, see, do you think it serves the value of innovation? I think no should be a very simple answer for you here. I think that uncertainty is bad, is it not? And I think that Congress has said that there's one agency, the Securities and Exchange Commission, under this committee. And you won't answer my question, and you're the head of that agency. So give me a break. Come on. I'm answering it in the generic because you would not want me to speak about any one set of facts and circumstance. OK, so, but you've already spoken. Have you said anything about Bitcoin? Uh, the, the, my predecessors and the agency itself has spoken to them. Okay, yes. but you're not willing to do the same about Ether. I okay, so let me just step back. There's a lack of clarity here in the marketplace. Can you at least agree to that? I think that the clarity is there. The law is clear. All that right. There's a group so let, of let me, let me be, you're Let me be explicit on. about this. The market doesn't see it. Your regulatory actions and the CFTC's regulatory actions say that there's a great deal of uncertainty here. It is the intention of this committee to fix that uncertainty and actually uh, provide a sound legal basis for this. Now, there's one more very important topic that I want to slightly talk about, and that is settlement, because it is about to happen. Now, I'll go ahead and actually take a quick break. We'll jump into the sponsor of this video, and then we'll touch over this very, very important topic that you do not want to miss. So let's roll the sponsor. Now, before we move further into this video, if you're trying to make yourself a ton of XRP by staking it, you have to use Dexpo, which is linked in the description. Now, I do want to say that they just sponsored this video, but they are actually one of the greatest platforms that I personally use to stake my XRP, and I've been staking with them for some time. Now, keep in mind, they give you your profits every single eight hours, and have over $386 million in total protocol liquidity, and that's increasing on a daily basis. They also have over 383 pairs and feature all of the top cryptocurrencies, including some of these smaller ones as well, so you can basically stake any cryptocurrency that you hold. And to top it off, for you guys, they're doing a 100x RP liquidity bonus, in which you get a 10-day liquidity bonus. The offer is limited, and make sure you guys take advantage of this. Again, the link is down in the description. They have a 
bunch of options like top up, withdraw, and view your transactions, and it is extremely simple to do all of this, and you can actually complete it in only a few clicks. I personally have not only been able to withdraw my profits, but also my initial investment, and they allow you to unlock your liquidity at any point in time and reap the rewards still that you have gained, so you basically don't lose. That being said, make sure you guys do use the link in the description, and let's get right back into the video. Settlement is going to happen. It's quite clear, and everybody has been talking about it really the question is when is it going to happen and so i'm going to slightly touch over this but i wanted to leave this for a separate video because i have just gotten real proof which i'll be revealing in my next video that settlement is about to happen it is factual it's going to happen and it's just a matter of exact timing so of course get prepared guys xrp is about to reach the moon if you are invested into xrp well, we'll have to see what happens. I'm not a financial or legal advisor, so none of this is financial or legal advice, but it is getting get very interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, please smash the like button and share this video. And as always, follow me on my social media as I always post there first. So follow me at Crypto Geek News. Instagram is also down below. Everything is there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.